Mexico, like, uh, you know, like the, the Padres did with Machado or, you know, or I don't know, man, I don't really see anybody else in the Yankees farm system that can really handle the shortstop position. Well, what but, about there's another team that comes and actually scoops that trade for them though. They go like, you know what? The Yankees are offering you this, but I got something better and I can yeah. make my team a lot better. So who do you think that team is? Do you think it's like a team out here in the West coast? I don't really see um, another team that really needs that uh, shortstop that bad. Um, but I do see a lot of teams that really need that starting pitcher. Yeah, and I agree. Mike Clevenger, I think, is going to be the the biggest trade for uh, for this season. He, yeah. Mike Clevenger is an ace. He is uh, an ace, yeah. He is an ace. And yeah. the only reason why he hasn't been known as an ace is because he was pitching around um, – Trevor Bauer. Trevor no, Bauer yes. and yeah. uh, Carlos Carrasco. Yeah. And um, – uh, What's the dude that broke his arm? I'm blanking out. <laughs> uh, Kluber. There you go. Corey Kluber. Oh, Corey Kluber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. The, when you listen to that starting rotation that the Indians had, and you're just like, how the hell did they lose? <laughs> yeah. They you had know? a good pitching staff. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but um, honestly, like I see the, the Indians as um as sellers. You know, they have Jose, uh, Jose Ramirez and yeah. um I don't really see any other like really big name talents that they have. And, you know, with the, uh, with the recent COVID um, uh, rule violation that Clevenger and both police act did. Yeah. I think that the Indians are more willing to give those guys up knowing that they, they went against their, uh, their team policy. Yeah. So police act is actually another one that could be traded. And that one, I don't really see a, um, a playoff contender team going after that guy. I think that he's more of a longevity thing. Longevity. So yeah, I, I, I see, uh, I see him as a, as a potential, potential uh, Cleveland's potential seller, but you know, Cleveland would honestly, in my opinion, be smart to keep him, even though he violated the protocol, he's still really young, you know, yeah. give him another chance. So do you, do you think like uh, the Lindor and the Clevenger is a blockbuster? It is, it's just, the Indians are just looking to actually trade both of them to the same team. Or are you looking in, are you saying that maybe the Indians might trade Clevenger to another team and then Lindor to another, or just keep both of them? Because remember they are a contender to try to make the playoffs. And we already talked about it in our last video that they are in, in playoff contention. So are you're saying that they're sellers, even though they're on, on, you know, in the playoff contention, even though they're in the top 16 teams right now, I really don't see them as a potential threat for the Astros, for the Yankees, for the Dodgers, for the Padres, you know, yeah. the, the teams that are actually like really the favorites to possibly win the whole thing. I see, um, I see Cleveland as, you know, they're trying to do their best right now, but they're still going to come up short. And that brings me to my next guy, which I also think that Carlos Carrasco could be on the, the block. Yeah. and uh, you know, he has two more years left in his contract. And Carlos Carrasco and Zach um, um, Clevenger, Mike Clevenger, Mike Clevenger, those are two really good starting pitchers. They're, they're both top 30 uh, starting pitchers in the league. And um, every team could use an upgrade as starting pitching. There's no uh, single team that is just like, oh, we don't need those guys. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there's a lot of teams in, in contention that I don't think um, – are going to go after a guy like that. But one team that I really see that could really use either one of those guys or both is the Braves, you know? Wow. The, the Braves, man, they, they just lost Mike Soroka. You know, the, he stepped off the mound towards first base and tore his Achilles, you know, and uh, Fulton Nevis just hasn't been the same since his uh, breakout year. They, they've had a lot, of, um, a lot of rough going. Cole Hamill's still on the IL. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know really what the Braves farm system looks like, but imagine if they got one or even both of those guys, then honestly, they would become the definitely the favorites in the East and um, yeah. possibly the World Series favorites. Yeah, because you have the Nationals that are struggling. You had already Strasburg out. You know, he's out with the carpal tunnel surgery. And, you know, that's just devastating for them. They just coming off the World Series championship and then now the 60-game 60, the 60 season and then now you're having him – go on the DL he always struggled with his arm though you know so yeah. I think the Braves yeah you're right the Braves could be contending to be the top team if they go after a big trade I mean we're not saying that's going to happen but 
if they go after it, man, that'll be a big team. If they go ahead and get Lindor and, you know, uh, Mike Levenger or even Carrasco to fill in the, the gap for that pitching staff. Yeah. If, if the Braves really go for that type of trade, it's because they want to win this year. Yeah. You know. And talking Acuna, about the yeah. Albies, like they, they just they have a rock star team already. They have a rock star lineup. I, I agree. The, I the agree with you. Pitching is the problem. So yeah, yeah. You know, uh, another team that what you just said, you just hit a point that if there's a team that wants to go all in, I feel is the Padres. And we've been talking about the Padres almost in all our podcasts. And the reason why we're doing that is because we see the talent that they have. That they have a talented team, and they just need one piece of the puzzle so they can go ahead and reach that next level you know we are talking about the Padres making a trade maybe with the Indians but who are they going to give up so they can go ahead and do that if they're going to go ahead and, and and be all in they need to go ahead and get those players there's the Mets the Mets are they going to be sellers you know the, the Mets have a lot of pitching and they could go yeah. ahead and trade with the Padres which is really good you have um you have the Pirates. You have the Pirates that they're in last place. They're not going to do anything. They're going to be sellers for sure. You know, if there's someone there that, that yeah, you can pick up, they, they can pick up from the minor league so they can include in that trade for the Indians, for Clevenger, you know, the Padres can go ahead and do that. They have yeah. a good farm system already. So, you know, it, it's scary to be a Dodger fan and seeing these from the Padres because the Padres are in the same division and we're seeing the Padres play the Dodgers pretty hard already. And imagine yeah. you get that yeah. one Honestly, picture. Though, like, I, I really like the competition that the Dodgers have right now. It's like yeah. they won the division seven years in a row because they don't really have much competition. Yeah. But now that there's another team kind of emerging to give them a little bit of a run for their money, you know, it's, it's, it's invigorating these guys on yeah. the Dodgers staff. You know, yeah. a lot of these guys get so complacent. They're, they just go out there and they play every day and they don't really have much competition in the West. Yeah. So they, they get a little like complacent, you know? Yeah, so um, I, I really think that this is going to help them like light a fire under them and get them ready for the playoffs. I agree, man. That's a good well, point. Actually. Yeah. So who, who else do you see uh, trading in, 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 in this uh, on August uh, 31st? Honestly, there, there's one team that I see as the biggest traders for this season, and they've already made one, team, uh, one trade, and that's the Boston Red Sox. Okay. The Red Sox, you know, they they lost their ace with Chris Sale um, with their with the injury that he had. He he might be ready by next season. He'll probably be ready by next season, but he's probably going to be on an innings limit. You know, you don't you don't um, come back from that type of injury without some kind of limitation on you. It also depends on what type of season we're going to have next year. If there's 162 games, he's definitely going to have uh, some type of limit. If it's only 60 games, you know, they, they might let him off the leash a little bit. But because he signed for a long deal, that's the type of guy that you don't want to re-injure. You know, you want yeah. him to work hard to get stronger, but not work so hard where he's just going to re-injure himself. That's true. So, and you're uh, saying the Red Sox are going to start trading so they can rebuild, right? Not to rebuild right, for, this year, exactly. but for next year. Okay. Yeah, like, they, they definitely want to rebuild. I mean, they have a lot of players on the team that they could potentially trade. And one guy that's been in a lot of trade talks lately is Jackie Bradley Jr. Oh, yeah, and that's true. If, if you know Jackie Bradley Jr., you know that his defense is amazing. His, his, he has a, a decent bat. You know, he's not going to be that guy that hits 30 home runs. Um, but, you know, he's, he's a solid, like, number – six seven in the lineup type of yeah. guy but he saves a lot of runs he's the guy that's going to jump over the fence for your team he's yeah. the guy that's going to run into the wall for your team and you want guys like that on the team you know and when i think about a guy like that uh, a team that could possibly use an outfielder is um the padres you know yeah. uh yeah. the they have will myers on their um on their team right now and He's doing really good this season. So I think that the Padres are could possibly be a seller for Will Myers also. He's owed $20 million uh, every year for the next, I believe it's three more years. He had a six-year deal. And um, they they could possibly use someone to fill that gap. And I think Jack, Jackie Bradley Jr. is going to be a free agent after this season. So um, if they could get that money off the books – and send him somewhere else and then possibly get Jackie Bradley Jr. as a rental, then 
they can go all out and just go ahead and sign Tatis like the Braves signed Acuna for this long-term deal. That's Give him true. $20 million a year. Acuna got $17 million a year for six years, I believe. So now Tatis being the next big thing, the, you know, the Padres need to lock him down for a long-term deal if they really want to be serious contenders for the next few years. Because once he's gone, they don't have anyone in their farm system that can compare to Tatis. I mean, who does? Yeah. No. And you don't know what you're going to have until you have him in the big leagues. Because Tatis was like, well, the Tatis was really already, they were already talking about him in the minor leagues, man. Yeah. They were already yeah. talking about it. Oh, next year, wait for next year. We're going to get Tatis up. And yeah, he didn't, he didn't disappoint. When he came up last year, it was like, whoa, he's going to be good. And then look at this year. He's all over the place. He's hitting home runs, stealing bases, getting RBIs, making plays. It's just, he's just kid is ready. He's like, 